Purcell. Welcome back to the Gumbalaya podcast. Welcome back. It's been a long time. Gumbalaya. Um, hopefully I could continue. This was supposed to be um, just something I did in between um, projects when when the wheels were turning a little bit slower and I had time to do what I love, which is to talk about stuff and also things both. Um, and, you know, fortunately, Things pick up and you start getting busy. So it's a kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing. Doesn't really bode well for uh, continuous content, <laughs> but um, but we're back. Or I'm back. I'm actually rocking solo. So I'm going to call this Ramblin' At. Uh, I think that'll be a cool name. It's uh, intended to just be time for me to be able to uh, get phone calls for time for me to be able uh, to just talk. Hopefully I'll um, be able to carve out like some consistent time and get guests on and 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 things like that because I, I like talking to people. It kind of feels weird to just ramble. Um, but uh, I'll call it Rambling At and it'll just be me rocking solo, sharing um, stuff. Don't know if it's going to be a theme because I like talking about a lot of stuff. I like thinking about a lot of stuff. My heart goes in many different places and my interests are numerous. Um, however, I've been um, been in a very, very, very uh, significantly transitional place. Maybe a good way to say it. I've had some uh, very difficult days in uh, the recent past. Um, a lot has changed um, in my life and in my heart and my spirit. And um, I'm not going to get too deep, probably because it's uh, incredibly personal stuff, but I don't know, maybe. Maybe we'll hit it thematically, maybe, I don't know. Um, but uh, recently, like last night I was at rehearsal. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm a music producer and a music director and, and whatnot. And I was running rehearsal last night and at the end of it, we were leaving. And uh, I mentioned to the group to remember to reach out to people um, um, because the holiday seasons are upon us and, you know, it's, it's, it's a great time for a lot of us, but it's, uh, not a great time for a lot of other people. And, um, as I said, you know, I had some heavy days recently and I have a very, very, um, clear understanding now of what it feels like to go through mental health issues because that's what um, was and is going on with me. I'm a lot better, um, but it was some it was some heavy days. It was some some heavy days, and I um, was able to reflect on the fact that um, you know my life has um, I found myself on the path in life where. Um, people feel comfortable um, and are drawn to, to share, um, you know, personal things with me in um, either, in, you know, in ministry when, when, um, when the counseling aspect of being a minister is, um, is relevant or necessary or needed. Um, and also just personally, you know, friends and, and loved ones that, that end up talking to me, um, you know, very, um, vulnerably and sharing stuff. And I'm grateful for it um, because, um, you know, it gives me an opportunity to kind of learn and to grow and also to show, you know, love in return. And anytime somebody trusts you with their heart, it's a wonderful thing because, you know, they're sharing their heart with you. You can share your heart with them. It's a wonderful thing. I definitely thrive on relationships. So um, it's a positive part of my life, even though sometimes it can be difficult because, you know, some people have gone through some really, really hard things and, uh, you know, you see them and they try to put on the happy face and then they leave from the social situations and, um, and, and they crumble. So, 
So last night at rehearsal, I um, I just mentioned to everybody to remember to reach out, um, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, um, people that that you know are placed in your heart to do so, because you very well could end up contacting the person that really needs the contact. You you um you should trust who comes to your mind and who's placed in your heart from whatever source you believe to be real and powerful and and um and uh at the center I guess of creation and and control of the universe, you know, whoever you believe is overall. Um I'm definitely a God person. I believe in in God, Jehovah. And so when when um when I started to learn that aspect about myself that um that I'm in a wonderful place to be able to be loving and to share love and that people trust me and um then the conversations um started to become a lot more I guess meaningful and it didn't just feel like you know I'm just talking to somebody um you know when you kind of come into the awareness that everybody doesn't allow themselves to be vulnerable with people, right? Everybody doesn't um, open their heart up. And so if someone does, it's a, um, a very clear indication that they see you as someone that they can trust. And we don't always make the right decision about who to trust. So when you're in the right headspace, when you have love in your heart, you should reach out. Reach out to people. Say what up. Doesn't even have to be super deep. Reach out. Say what's up. Ask how you doing. What's going on. Share what's going on with you if you choose to do so. And the point is really just to show love. It doesn't have to be deep. If it gets deep, no prob. But um, sometimes you're just getting a phone call from someone that that is thinking about you. It's a really big deal. It's a really big deal. It's that's been the case with me my whole life, but definitely, definitely recently, I was in some very dark places, some very low, very low places, and um, you know, uh, th- there's been a lot of things that have helped me through it. Um, you know, I started, I started therapy, um, different types of counseling, and um, but. Honestly, I believe most of it was the love and support from my friends and family. Like that's that's kind of how my spirit sings is by connecting with people and having regular indications and reminders and interactions with people that genuinely have love for me. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Getting that random phone call from somebody that, you know, I might have reached out to them and saying, you know, you, you got a sec and, you know, we talked about whatever. And and um, so, you know, that's understandable. But then sometimes it was just some people that, you know, yo, you're on my mind, wanted to reach out. It's a big deal. So be that person if you choose to do so. I'm encouraging you to be that person um, from both sides of the matter, from, from someone who... Um, has been lifted from very dark places and dark moments very recently, as well as knowing what knowing what um, hearing and remembering how people share with me how much I've helped when I did that, when I reached out, when I was like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm a phone person. I'll be calling. You know what I mean? Um, the busier I am, the harder it is to do, obviously, because, you know, if you have a full schedule, if you got a lot of work, it's hard to just reach out. But when I can, I reach out because I be missing people. I really love people. And I, I think that's a lot of why that's been my path is because when I'm talking to someone, I'm genuinely talking to them. It's not just because I feel like I should for whatever reason or um, because I'm trying to get something or whatever, you know. Um, I, I try to be as direct as possible because um, nobody likes to feel used or manipulated and, you know, nobody likes feeling like they're dealing with an opportunist and it sucks. Um, but I, I can recall several 
several times in my life where I would find out that someone that I'd seen at events a lot or someone that I'd hung out in the studio with or whatever is like a very seriously big deal in their genre or in their industry. But I didn't know. I just thought it was a nice person. Hey, that's so-and-so and so. Like, do you know who that is? Yeah, it's so-and-so. Like, what do you mean? And then someone would tell me, well, this person, blah, 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 and they did this movie or they did this project or this is a legend. They work with this person. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, and I try not to be weird about it after that point, but, you know, um, people are people. So it's it's been my path, and I'm grateful for it because it gives me the opportunity to um, to share love and Holiday season is upon us, and I have had several conversations recently where, um, you know, I was trying to reach out to folk to kind of get out of my own funk and, and you know, make some connections with, with people for my benefit, and I ended up talking to, you know, a few folk who um, were also going through and and struggling and even just recently of, of you know and f- for those of you that you know i have you know regular dialogue with don't worry I, i'm not gonna be telling your business i don't i don't get down like that um but my point in saying that is just it really does make a difference it re- it really really does one of the one of the significant struggles um with you know different types of of mental health, um, or, or even just like conditional, you know, conditional situations where, you know, you might not have an ongoing issue or struggle, but there just might be certain triggers around the holidays that, um, are very difficult to kind of get through and, and to process. Um, everybody doesn't come from a happy and healthy family. Definitely learn that. Um, over and over and over and over and over again. Um, it's wonderful if you do. Be grateful. Everybody doesn't. Everybody doesn't go home to love, which sucks. Everybody doesn't get relief from the idea of going home to see their family, right? And as I got older and I started to integrate my life with other people's, you know, all in conversation, but also just in practice, you know, you go with a friend to their crib for, you know, dinner or, or, or a, a special dinner or whatever, just to hang out. Maybe somebody's having a birthday party, you know, and you get over there and you hear maybe the way their parents talk to them or you see the sibling that's got some very serious issues and, and the whole family is just used to that person's issues. And you like, yo, what's up with your boy? You know? Um, people's lives are very different and the reality that, you know, a lot of you already know, but you know, that some of you might not realize is that that weight is very heavy for some and often is not sitting in their hearts such that they want to share it with everybody, right? So until you show your heart and make yourself available to someone, even if it's just every now and then, they might be able to um, find a place of trust with you, open up their heart to you, share what's going on, and then you can pray with them, you can pray for them, you can um, remind them of things that, you know, we get locked in our heads you know, feeling alone, feeling like we don't want to ruin everybody else's um, day or life or situation um, just because our hearts are heavy or because of the things that we're dealing with. I mean, you, you know how it is. So sometimes getting that phone call from a friend, and they're like, yo, how you doing? Some people will choose, you know what? I'm not doing great, and I'm glad you called me. Because I could use somebody to talk to. You know, and that's the goal. To be to be in a place of availability to someone that might need it. 
At least that's my goal. I can't say that's your goal. Your goal might be to make a whole lot of money and to be famous and blah, blah, blah. blah. But that's not my goal. Mine um, is to learn what makes my heart sing or learn more of what makes my heart sing. Find ways to show love to people. Find ways to um, to be of service to God that his love can pour out, you know, through me to make somebody else's life better. Because in that process um, of me showing love to someone, me receiving love for someone, I'm happier. Me, right? So a little bit of it is selfish, a little bit, because it, it really does make my life brighter and happier um, to be able to connect with a lot of people. I um, I found that out about myself in a very crazy situation where um, I overheard someone talking about me from frustration. And basically the person said, you know, he's, he's constantly looking for connection. And I don't really need that. I don't need that. And, you know, that's very real for that person, right? And it was a it was a little bit of a shocker to me because I didn't know I was getting on this person's nerves like that. And, you know, we talked uh, about it and, and it's all love. Like we 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 had the conversation and, and I understood kind of what was behind the comment. And it really wasn't about me, really. That was just them processing um, getting to know me. But it was very enlightening for me because I did know very well. It's, you can't really know me and not know how much I love people, how much I love connecting with people, how much I love um, interacting and um, and and having connection. Like that, I just I thrive on it um, very much. So I look forward. I don't even like doing like this. Doing this, yeah, you know, this is a way for me to kind of get out of my head. And 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 share something that I think is um, really important, and you know that can make the world a better place. Blech, you know, but I don't want to talk to myself. It's weird, you know. Um, speaking of talking to yourself, that so that the reason I wanted to speak is because of that. Reach out, show some love. Um, but the talking to yourself is something weird. I just um, I just learned. Um, I can't remember where I heard it, but um, because of the the um, because of the the storm I was just in, and that um, you know, I believe I'm coming out. You know, I think the you know I can see the peace that 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 um, that is. I can I can see the hand of God in different areas of my life. I can see what He's restoring. You know, still you know I'm still struggling with with a lot, um, but I can see the clouds parting. You know, um, but in the process, somewhere I was reading or 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 um, or maybe I was talking to 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 someone, but some kind of a, it might have been a TED talk or something, but. Uh, I remember hearing someone talk about the concept of speaking to yourself. And to me, that's always been weird. I, I don't know nothing about it. I can't relate or I couldn't relate. Uh, and so the idea just seems silly uh, to me. But, I, you know, I, I recall, I wish I could remember where it was because I'd love to to refer you to the that source so you can kind of hear the the concept in context, but I do remember the impression that it made on me, which is talking to yourself allows you to control what's coming in, right? Um, this season that um, I've been through um, is um, without question the hardest thing I've ever been through. I've, I've been in more pain than I've ever felt in my entire life. And um, it, 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 I was led or found myself 
in the darkest places I've ever been in, in terms of me within myself. Right. Um, and it was, it was, was not good. I really do believe I'm so much better. And I mean, even the fact that I can just kind of talk right now and uh, fall apart, you know, um, it means I'm a lot better. So I, um, you got to speak life, definitely learn. You got to speak life, even though it's important to share what's really going on with your head and your heart and in your spirit. Um, I, I don't believe in, in lying to be positive, but I have definitely learned the idea of speaking life and, and concentrating on the areas where you can and should be grateful, right? And mindful of the counterbalance. If you spend too much time in the dark places, you'll spiral. And that's what I've been doing for months. It's been very bad and it sucks and I don't want to be there. So um, wherever this source was, I will try to find it and you know maybe post it or something. I don't know. But um, the person was talking about the significance of, of controlling your narrative, controlling what is coming in um, to you. And, and this person was explaining that your brain does not differentiate from someone else talking to you versus you talking to yourself, um, as well as the, the significant I guess um, the significance of your thoughts reaffirming um, your reality. And so when you are in a place where your mental health is not um, in balance, I guess maybe would be the right way to say it. Um, I have learned and I have experienced how much worse your situation can become when your inner monologue, your inner dialogue is completely focused or seemingly locked into um, the dark places, the dark thoughts, right? Because life is balanced. There, There is no all dark. There is no all light. Life is everything, right? Um, and that's been a significant struggle of mine. It's just being in that place where I felt worthless. Uh, I, I got to be careful because I don't want to start crying and stuff right now. But that's where I was. I was feeling worthless. I was feeling um, insignificant. I was feeling like a failure. I was feeling um, like all of the things that I've explained towards the beginning of this where, you know, I've, I've learned myself to be someone that people trust and that people confide in. And I've been, I've been um, made aware through, you know, um, um, you know, through, through God's revelation, but also just directly from people saying it, that, um, that I've been very helpful to a lot of people in life. And, you know, that makes you feel good. But, I, you know, after a life of all of that, and honestly, having ongoing conversations up to the point where um, the, the trauma that I, that I dealt with, um, I guess, was um, put on the table. Um, there was a lot about my, my mental health and myself and, and my heart that I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, and because it came through trauma, it was incredibly difficult for me to think in a healthy way, to think through it in ways that were not um, um, destructive and self-deprecating, I guess would be the word. Um, it was very tough. And I tried very hard. I was in prayer all the time. Um, I have a great relationship with an exceptionally wonderful pastor. Um, I have gobs of friends and family members who are wise and loving and who made themselves available to me at a moment's notice. Like I got plenty of people I can call and whatever they're doing, they just pick up the phone. I mean, like in the middle of work in the middle of whatever, they pick up the phone. Yo, what you need? What's up? And um, if you know me, you know 
when something's on my heart, I can talk for a long time. I'm going to try to keep these, uh, these, um, these uh, segments short, um, but I can go, I can talk a long time, you know. And I, I found the truth that I'm surrounded by love, that I'm surrounded by support, that um, even the trauma that I went through um, was definitely a trauma, but my ability to process was so heavily dependent on on things about myself that I didn't know, struggles that I didn't know I was struggling with, right? Things in my life that were kind of building up in my heart that I didn't know were unresolved. You know what I mean? And then just some truths. You know, a lot of what I learned is, you know, Nobody's perfect. You know, I, 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 had, uh, I had some heartbreak with some people that are close to me. And um, as I've explained, people are very important to me. So my friends and family are, um, you know, are incredibly significant and uh, um, an integral part of what makes me happy in life. So when... Um, when that is threatened, and I've, I, now that I kind of reflect, I've I've seen that my whole life, um, but this one was very significant, and I ended up, um, I ended up in a place where I f- I felt like I said I felt worthless, I felt meaningless, I felt like nothing I say or do was any good to anyone, not myself and not anybody else. I um it was it was very bad, you know when when you're in a place where you don't where you're not able to see your own worth, you're not able to see um, your your relevance in the world, so to speak, then you kind of like, well, what's the point in being here? You know what I mean? And and that that opens the door to much worse thoughts. I'll just leave it right there. I don't want to trigger anybody, but um, it was very rough. And like I'm, you know, like I started having people that would reach out, having people that would check in, having people that would give me their time, their attention and their time um, uh, often and regularly was a very, very big deal. Having people that would pick up pick, pick up when I called, very big deal. Um, um, but everybody can't do that all the time. So when I when I saw this individual or when I was reading about um, this 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 person who had found some a lot of relevance in talking to yourself. Um, it was really weird, but I kept trying to come up for air um, from from you know the, the dark places in my heart and the dark places um, that my 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 spirit was. Um, I was like, yo, I got it. I gotta try anything that seems to be. Um, um, helpful or or productive or functional. I got to do something. I got to get out of this, right? So, um, oh man, I wish I could remember who it was. I think it was a black man and like an older black man, I think. Anyways, one of the things he mentioned, um, you know, if, if, if anybody recognizes what I'm talking about, if you can remember, it, it, I feel like it was circulating recently. I think it was someone talking about their de- it was it was on the Michelle Obama um, 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 the this, this show. I think it's on Netflix. And I think I think like maybe her dad or someone in their life used to kind of talk to themselves in the mirror to kind of orient their day or something like I'm pretty sure it's that on the Michelle Obama one I think it's on like Hulu or Netflix or something but anyways the point was to intentionally control your inner narrative and you do that by speaking to yourself in the mirror and I'm telling you it felt ridiculous at first it did but um, I didn't do it every day the 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 this person was talking about doing it every day and 
um, I followed that um, that that concept, and you know, I, I read a lot of other people that were you know talking about the idea and concept of self talk, and I did find it to be to be very helpful to say what I prefer instead of trying to analyze my own thoughts because it wasn't working. It wasn't working. I was I was going weeks with only sleeping a couple of hours a night. I was having trouble eating because I just wasn't hungry. You know what I mean? And and it's tough to kind of, you know, shove food in your mouth if you're not well. It's tough for some people to, <laughs> to shove food in your mouth when you're not hungry. But it was tough for me. Um because I just I, I just wasn't hungry and I felt like I was wasting food because I wasn't finishing it. So I needed a way out. And taking a moment every now and then, looking in the mirror, me like, yo, this is what's happening. This is what happened. How are we going to deal with this? What are we going to do? Are we going to be miserable forever? Are we going to hold on to, you know, the issues? Are we going to just rehearse the things that we know aren't true? You know, I, I literally had to look at myself and be like, I know I'm not worthless. You know you're not worthless. You know that. It feels like it right now. This is very difficult. And it's okay to be honest about the reality of, of what you're going through. But you have to also tell yourself, remind yourself, and spend time being mindful about the fact that a situation is a situation. An aspect of your life is only that. It's not your whole life, even though it might feel like it. And there's always a decision that you can make to make it a little bit better, maybe even a lot bit better. Right? For me, it did help. If it helps you, great. If it helps somebody else, share it with them. When you call them, which was the point of this episode, reach out. Call somebody. What's the song? Uh, mm, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can, oh Lord, reach out and touch somebody's hand. And make this world a better place. If you can. Right. Anyways, um, love you dearly. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you um, would like. Um, I'm your friend. I love you. It's your boy CA. Take care. If I've been helpful to you, please like and subscribe. If you think others will be blessed, please share it. Thank you for the gift of your time and attention. I'm very grateful and I don't take it lightly. Peace and blessings to you and yours. Cause I got mine. Worry about yours, cause I got mine. Mine, 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 Cause I got mine. Praise and production.